Hello, everybody who's just joining in. Welcome to Key Concepts, uh, Conversations for Piano Teachers. This is session number two. Uh, my name is Ben Fomlow. I'm the Piano Department Coordinator here at Amro Music. And uh, just want to, one quick note, uh, I think there was some confusion on the, the date and the topics. We had a couple internal things uh, going on last week, and so we pushed it back. And uh, we'll be covering kind of the upcoming schedule here at the end of the session. Um, but we're excited to be here, excited to um, continue the conversation of uh, elevating our studio experience and uh, really honoring the students' investment and uh, the art of teaching in a world that is different than it was six months ago uh, during this pandemic. It's made us all realize what's important to ourselves and to our families and uh, made us really kind of learn new ways to reach students and be effective and just keep things going. So proud of all the hard work we've done. A couple of housekeeping uh, things. If you are uh, watching this live and have questions that come up, um, don't forget the Q&A button at the bottom. We'll try to answer those as we go along or at the end. And um, that would be the best way to park any of those questions. Uh, just a reminder, this re webinar is being recorded. So if there's something you want to refer back to, um, you'll be able to get that on our website where we're archiving all of our episodes of Key Concepts. So uh, today's session is on uh, is on considerations for reopening your private studio. Now this is probably kind of a uh, hot button topic and something that I know we've been getting lots of questions at the store about um, is this safe? What are other teachers doing? What should I be doing? Um, and of course lots of different opinions and everybody's landing in different places as far as how they are managing uh, that experience safely. So we're going to dive in with uh, hopefully some best practices and um, definitely want to hear additions. The goal is that we have created um, a document that will be shared out with anybody who's participating in this and anybody who, uh, if you're watching the recording, all you've got to do is just reach out to AMRO. Uh, this, is an edit this will be an editable Word document that you can use with your studio. Um, I think, uh, you know, as professionals, we definitely owe it to our families to, um, to let them know if we're going to be opening our homes and our private studios, here are the things I'm doing to keep your child or you uh, safe and healthy. Here's what we're doing to protect the equipment and to provide uh, an outstanding experience. Online lessons may still be uh, the right thing to do for some students, um, but we've heard from a lot of teachers that some of the limitations with audio in particular and uh, just learning styles and younger students, um, just it's very not conducive. So. Uh, there are some some teachers and some students who are just ready to get back into the, the world of face-to-face. -face. And so we're going to dive in. So let me share my screen here. Let's see. So here we are. Uh, and again, this will be a document that is available freely to teachers. Um, and it's um, not something that we've created by ourselves. I want to give credit to where credit is due. Um, this has been compiled with the input of many local teachers and professionals in the music industry and also um, a few others here. So let's, let's dive in. Here's what we're going to cover today. So a little bit about where this came from uh, uh, and then of course just why music and uh, trying to answer that question in as um, diplomatic way as possible. Is it safe to resume in-person lessons? Um, you know, that's a very hot button question. We're going to talk about some things that we should definitely be doing to uh, help prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our studios. What are some policies and traffic patterns and things like that? What is the CDC recommending? We're going to be giving you and providing you the uh, links to the most up-to-date information because I think as something we've all seen is this stuff changes every day. If we uh, uh, look at what was being said a month ago, we've learned more about the uh, professionals have learned more about the virus since. And so it's important that uh, as you are going that you know, you're know you always referring to the most current information and constantly refreshing and updating based on what we know. We're gonna take a look at some student screening questions, things that you should probably consider asking your families to do before they leave home, things that they need to do when they reach your studio, when they hit the door. Uh, we're gonna finish by taking a look at, okay, what can we do with uh, the pianos and those high touch surfaces in our studios? Uh, how can we make sure that we are uh, providing a safe experience from 
uh, you know, student lesson to student lesson, and then um, kind of summarize it at the end, and we'll open it up to questions or comments at the end. So let's dive in. So uh, this document really is inspired. I want to give credit to our um, instrumental uh, music department here at Amro Music. They earlier this summer created a very similar document, uh, Considerations for a Safe Return to the Instrumental Music Classroom. So particularly for band and orchestra teachers with lots of questions about, um, you know, how are we going to do, uh, provide beginning, you know, wind instrument training with the aerosols in the air. And so they did a lot of research and had a lot of input from some of the names um, listed, some of the, the top teachers and uh, experts in the local area. Um, so that is what kind of inspired the idea that, hey, we need to do this. We need to provide the same information for piano. Um, many of you have reached out um, in response to some questions that a few of us have polled and some of your uh, comments are included in here. Um, of course, uh, you know, with, without being credited, just uh, due to some requests there. But uh, we've also got a lot of college faculty. And then, of course, as I said, the, the CDC uh, guidelines and the Piano Technicians Guild. Um, you know, we want to prevent the spread of COVID-19 without hindering student um, learning. As I said, this is a document we hope that is helpful to you as a teacher and your studio. Um, we've tried to, to write everything in a way that makes it easy to take and adapt. If you would want to download this document and um, create a uh, COVID guidelines for the studio, of, um, that would be fabulous. So uh, hopefully this is something you can share publicly with your families um, with questions when you get your families that ask, hey, you know, how are you handling this? You have an answer that's prepared. Um, so this is a gathering place. This document will be updated. So um, we're looking into, okay, how can we uh, continue to keep, uh, you know, the guidelines in here refreshed as new information is learned? Please take it, learn from it. We wish you the best of luck. Um, and not luck, uh, science-based strategies tell us there are things we can do to um, you know, mitigate the risk, and we're gonna talk about that. So, uh, why music? Uh, I think it's important to start any discussion of why we're gonna be um, opening our doors with everything going on in the world right now. I think we have to go back to uh, and start with answering those questions of why do we do what we do? You know, the school year we're already seeing is challenging for students. Many students are doing online um, education uh, here, you know, in our local Shelby County area and many other districts. And so students are staring at computer screens for now six or eight or 10 hours a day just for learning, let alone social media and entertainment. And uh, that is going to have impacts for years to come that we don't yet know about. Um, and Students, uh, not every student is going to respond well to that. We know that a lot of students are stressed right now. Um, we need to find ways to help them unplug and de-stress. And music offers them that platform um, for self-esteem and, um, and decompressing from the stress of all of the online lessons and learning. You know, in addition to that, all of the benefits we've always talked about with music education. You know, your students may take piano because they have an aptitude for it and love it, but the life skills they learn, creative problem solving, self-expression, um, awareness of other people, all of those things are going to be critically important later in life. And uh, the more that we are quarantined at home and that our children whose minds and brains are still developing and their social skills, as, as the number of opportunities they have for those interactions really decreases, um, opportunities like music lessons are going to be even more important than ever before. Um, we know the benefits of music education. We know that it helps uh, test scores and college enrollments and um, just better performances. Students are more motivated. They're more likely to graduate on time. All of these benefits are things that are unchanged despite the virus going around in the world. I think there's not a better time for piano than right now. That's something uh, I know we have seen here with uh, higher levels of activity this summer, more interest than piano. If, if you're teaching, I hope that you are, um, have experienced a summer that's been busier than ever before. I've heard that from many teachers that, um, you know, enrollment was up this summer. Some of you taught for the first time over the summers when you would normally take a vacation and be off. I think parents are looking for any structure for their children 
uh, that they can, especially with many sports not having the same opportunities, many other activities, um, any structure they can provide. And a lot of parents are looking for activities that can get their children out of the house in a safe and healthy way. And so to stand out and distinguish your studio and to be able to provide a safe environment um, that's gonna really transform these children's lives, that's critical. So um, congratulations to you for being in the right place at the right time. Um, now let's take a look at this question. Is it safe to resume in-person lessons? That's a difficult question to answer. Um, I don't think that we can take an absolute polarized approach and say, Yes, absolutely, there are no risks at, at all. Um, that would be unwise. And I think it would also be unfair to say it's totally unsafe to um, offer in-person lessons. Uh, there is a, a middle ground and a, a, the longer this uh, current condition uh, goes on, we're gonna have to find ways to, to work within uh, and find new ways of doing, uh, doing life. Uh, so uh, the conversation today, I want to frame in that we are not trying to prevent risk. We're not trying to eliminate it totally. We are trying to mitigate the risk, which is a difference. The, to mitigate the risk means we're trying to take every step possible to reduce the likelihood that uh, any, any, any uh, spread of this virus happens in our studio. And we've put in place systems and structures that, hey, if we have a situation, we know how we're going to respond to it. We're not reactionary. We're not in the moment unprepared for things that come up along the way. Um, so, you know, that way we're not caught in a situation like we were this spring where all of a sudden, okay, we've got to figure this out. Now we've got to go on to online lessons. How do we do that? Um, so the conversation today is all about mitigating the risk, about reducing um, the challenges that come from working within the realms of the unknown. So, Let's get started. Um, by the way, lots of references throughout this document. Feel free to um, access them and review. Um, and also just to uh, you know, say, hey, this isn't just my personal opinion about the benefits of music or any of these things here. Fabulous reading and resources here that um, whether related to this conversation or just as ways to inspire your families, um, great resources to send to them. So, Let's talk about some studio policies that can help us reduce the spread of COVID-19. Um, again, for those of you that have joined us um, after we got started here, please feel free to chime in, use the Q&A box if you have questions related to any section or um, even just comments related to this. Um, so we're monitoring those throughout and we'll be glad to field them either as we go along or at the uh, end of the session. So I think it's going to be important that for your families, uh, if you choose to open your, your door to, um, to, to, to families uh, and students, that we have policies in place and we know what we're doing. And we're gonna need to have regular cleaning and disinfecting uh, schedules into classrooms um, and studios here. Um, the CDC puts out uh, a wonderful document that's updated frequently, guidance for cleaning, disinfecting public spaces, workplaces, businesses, schools, and homes. Um, and uh, I, the great thing is you, we should be able to point to, to this and say, hey, this is what is actually being recommended on the federal level. There are really kind of three primary means that we're gonna be using to clean our instruments. We're gonna get into that a little bit more in detail toward uh, the second part of this presentation. When we're cleaning a piano, we'll be using um, alcohol-based uh, products. So going ahead and making sure if we're using um, rubbing alcohol, that's isopropyl alcohol, CDC recommends um, use concentrations greater than 70%. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is another good um, CDC-approved cleaner to fight COVID. And that is one that's actually recommended by every piano manufacturer right now uh, because it will not damage the finish. It won't dry out the woods and the materials of the piano. And there's another product out uh, on the market also uh, known as Steri Spray. It's made by a company called Super Slick. Super Slick is actually a um, band and orchestra um, accessory manufacturer. And this is a product that uh, the Steri Spray was previously, we kind of just used it to kind of freshen cases and uh, mouthpieces, but this uses a uh, a CDC approved cleaner known as Coordinary Ammonium. 
this is a great uh, product because you can use it on any surface. This is one of the ones we're using here at our store with high traffic areas on pianos when people leave. Uh, it's very affordable and uh, we're sanitizing pianos between players when they're in our store. So it's something we have for six months felt very safe and comfortable using. We haven't found a surface that it, um, that it has caused any problems, whether no matter the finish of the piano or the color, the, whether it's wood tone or ebony. Um, rubbing alcohol is not ideal in every surface. Um, it can damage some more satin finishes. So you have to be a little bit more cautious with uh, what you're putting it on there. Um, but it's important to go ahead and make sure that um, as a studio owner and as a teacher, you have good sources of plenty of this cleaning product. You'll be going through a lot more of it, not just, um, you know, the cleaner itself, but paper towels and disposable, um, you know, materials that you can use to clean. Uh, lots of resources here in this as far as, um, you know, the list of disinfectants that from COVID that's being made of, um, available through the, the EPA. And as they learn more and, and new products come to market, they're updating that. So that can, is a great resource from you, uh, for you here. It's important to establish procedures and schedules for your students. If you're going to have stu one student after another, something I've heard from um, many teachers is that they're allowing some extra time between lessons. Uh, one of the more recent pieces of information about um, how can the public prevent the spread of this virus talks a lot about um, giving an opportunity for um, air change to happen within smaller spaces. So um, air change refers to let the HVAC system, the air conditioning, the heating exchange the air in the room and let all the aerosols from us breathing in and out, um, even though we'll be wearing masks, uh, let all of that change. So it may be a good idea to uh, make sure that your parents know, hey, uh, this is your lesson time. Please don't come in before that. If, um, so here are some good guidelines to recommend. Uh, students who arrive early to lessons should wait in cars with the parents rather than coming right in. You know, unless you have a designated waiting area away from the lesson area and you know, away from uh, the area where you as the teacher are, um, having them just simply wait in the car until the appointed time will figure out what system it is. You stick your head out the door and wave and invite them in. Um, another good one is uh, along that lines of letting folks in, um, touch surfaces. Limit the number of people that are touching that. Uh, open the door for the students themselves. Um, they may think, hey, you're just being chivalrous, um, but hey, nobody else needs to touch the doorknob or the handle. You're gonna also prevent the, the touch spaces. Um, many of you have said, hey, when the students hit my, uh, hit my studio, they need to enter through an assigned door and go directly to wash their hands. Um, that way, whatever they've had in the car, maybe they're eating on the way, um, licking their fingers, um, they have clean hands before they ever sit down and touch anything like your piano or warm-up materials or music that you're gonna be touching. So having them wash or disinfect their hands using soap and water, uh, the happy birthday song that we've all learned to sing for 20 seconds, or hand sanitizer you know, with a high enough alcohol content Here's one that may uh, be something we don't think about, but we should make sure students are not sharing materials. It's easy to just have a stack of pencils at the piano ready to go for lessons um, uh, or music, but have your students provide their own supplies, of course, their own music and their own method books, but have them bring their own pencil. Um, things like that, that we don't think about, that we just pick it up and grab it before we know, oh, wait, I didn't think about that. That is. Um, uh, something that uh, one teacher pointed out saying, hey, nope, if they don't have a pencil, uh, you know, they're out of luck. So, uh, you know, that, taking it pretty seriously there. And of course, uh, you know, frequently touched objects in the classroom, music stands, doorknob switches, uh, the bathroom itself, keyboard, uh, faucets, other things like that. We're going to sanitize those, just letting your parents know that, hey, every day we're paying attention to that between lessons we're doing this. Studio layout. Um, you know, we actually, at the middle of July, reopened our adult piano lessons program here at the store. And this is something we did after a lot of deliberation and consultation with a few sources. And we totally revamped the layout and uh, even the, the area where we're teaching to allow ourselves to have some uh, traffic patterns and distancing. So um, this is an area that I would encourage you to really 
spend some time looking at your space and, and walk through as the student and as the family and say, okay, when they hit the door, where do they go? And if you can, by any means, have a one-way traffic flow pattern from the front door to the restroom, to the piano, to how they leave. And, uh, and this is a great in, uh, spot to actually insert that information here. Um, of course, in that space, when you're with the lesson, sit, you know, letting your fam families know, hey, I'm going to sit on a chair six feet from the piano bench. Uh, that way I'm allowing that social distancing. Uh, I, to that extent, I've heard from many teachers who um, said, hey, I had a digital that I you know, haven't used very much, but I've pulled that out. And that's my demonstration instrument so that I'm not even playing the piano that my students are playing or that I can demonstrate it during the lesson without cleaning pianos between students. I'd encourage you to make and share and post that traffic pattern with your family. It doesn't have to be anything fancy at all, but let them know, um, hey, this is, this is the traffic flow. Please, you know, I mean, you can put down red tape and, and arrows on dots on the floor and let families know you know, this is where we go. And if you need to go backwards, you need to go all the way around, particularly at those times as the uh, lessons are changing. That way you don't have crossing traffic. We don't wanna have one student coming and another. Um, it seems like touch services uh, we've talked about so far, that's a, you know, a big area of, of concern. But uh, from everything, some of the recent research with the virus, it seems that a lot of this interpersonal uh, interaction seems to be the way that most of the virus is being spread. And uh, so limiting opportunities for people that, that don't need to interact with each other on a real up close basis, um, having defined and set traffic patterns, kind of like your fire exit plan, which is also something you should have for your studio, um, going ahead and defining that and saying, hey, when we enter the studio, come here, here's the piano bench, and then you leave through the other door. Your space may be different, you know, uh, um, but really think through if you can't have one-way traffic, think through that extra time that you may want to allow. That way, um, you know, you're giving everybody the space and the distance that they need. How are we doing? Any questions so far? Let me check the Q&A. All right, well, let's keep going here. All right, guidelines. A lot of this is common sense. The same things you're seeing on the news are things that we should be expecting for our studios. Um, more importantly than, than probably the most important thing in this document, wearing a mask. Uh, letting your families and students know, hey, all students are required to wear a mask. Put your mask on before you enter the studio and leave it on until you've left the building. Um, and to that extent, really, you know, making sure that the student is the only one that's coming in, if at all possible. Limit the number of people. Um, one that we think about, you know, if hey, we're not feeling well, I know uh, with allergies here in the Mid-South, you know, anytime now that I wake up with a scratchy throat, you know, I'm super panicked. Um, but making sure, hey, ask your families to check, check their temperature before the student comes to the lessons. And if you have a fever or you feel sick or you have come in contact with anyone who stayed uh, tested positive, stay home. Reach out to me, the teacher. Let's reschedule or hey, let's make other arrangements. We can always default back to the online lessons if needed. Um, so practicing social distancing, limiting the number of people in these common areas. If a parent wants to come in or needs to come in, you know, obviously limiting that to one. Little brothers and sisters, they don't need to come home. Parents need, should make other arrangements. Sanitizing the work area regularly. Um, and something that we have talked about here with our employees at the store, um, about following best practices outside of the lessons. You know, we've talked about that with, you know, our responsibility to not just teachers, but the students and the families that are coming in here. You know, what we do outside of work here impacts our coworkers and our customers. And so um, being considerate of the groups that we inter interface with, um, asking our, our families, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about going back to face-to-face -face lessons, but I need to know that I'll have the buy-in of all my families who are participating in that. You know, if you're having pool parties and things like that, I probably don't want you to be coming face-to-face. -face. Um, you know, encouraging frequent hand washing. All of these things really are, are very basic to what we've already heard and know, um, but simply communicating to our families that, hey, these are the expectations. And uh, you know, if you're not comfortable with any of these things, we have other options. 
you know, maybe in-person lessons aren't right for those families yet, but for the families that, um, you know, would benefit from online lessons, getting them to buy in and agree and, hey, who knows, uh, you know, maybe even sign off on saying, yes, I'll, I'll adhere to these guidelines um, would be a good policy for your studio. Let's talk a little bit more about the screening process. We mentioned checking the temperature. Here are some questions that, uh, you know, they should be asking before they leave and get in the car to come to your studio. You know, when they're taking the temperature, uh, the CDC has said and continues to say, um, you know, any temperature higher than 100.4 degrees, stay home. It is normal for the human body to fluctuate. I mean, everybody knows 98.6 is a healthy temperature. But some people don't ever quite make it to 98.6. Some people, their normal is 97.6. Some people is slightly higher. Um, but 100.4 seems to be that point where uh, you know, the, the, all of the health institutions and physicians say, hey, that's more of a sign of concern. And, and I would encourage you to just, you know, decide if you want to express that. And of course, you know, anything you add on top of that is a good thing. Here are the standard questions to ask um, and to have your families ask themselves, hey, have we been in close contact with anyone with a confirmed case of COVID-19 in the last 14 days? Think about, okay, it, it, you know, if they have been, what's the next step? They need to notify you and they need to say, hey, we, we've got a family member that's diagnosed. We were at their house. We feel great, but we're not going to be coming. What's the plan? Are you going to jump back into online lessons? Thinking through, okay, immediately, how do we shift so that student learning doesn't suffer, but neither does uh, the opportunity for all of your other families to continue coming? Uh, your family should be asking, you know, themselves, hey, are they experiencing a cough, shortness of breath, or sore throat? Have they had a fever in the last 48 hours? Just because they don't have a fever that day doesn't mean, hey, they're in the clear. Is there any loss of taste or smell? Any vomiting or diarrhea in the last 24 hours? Basic, basic things that can go a long way if everybody does their part and participates. So making sure that your families know, hey, if you answer yes to any of these questions, do not come to lessons. Call me, we can make other arrangements. And this would be a good spot to go ahead and insert all of that protocol for what you want. Have them, um, what's your makeup policy? And you may need to be flexible on that. Or, hey, let's do online lessons. Making sure that you have all of that equipment um, you know, already in place. And determining, hey, do they need to consult with their physician before they venture back into your studio? All right. Lesson protocols. As we said, wearing a mask, washing their hands, all of those things here. Insert any other specific information uh, that you would like your families to do. If it's waiting in the car, if it's sending you a text message, hey, we're here, has the last student left, can we come on in? All of those things. Um, I had several teachers who said uh, they're actually shortening their lessons so that they can allow time to clean the piano and the equipment between students. Um, you know, if you're doing 20, 35, 30 minute lessons, bumping to a 25 uh, minute lesson may not be that bad of an idea or an hour lesson, five minutes off of there um, to allow for cleaning and disinfecting the pianos. Um, as I said, I've heard from a lot of teachers that have picked up a digital or pulled it back out or pulled it into the studio so that they can demonstrate techniques um, without sharing pianos with the students. Um, Sometimes that's not possible. So, um, you know, asking students, hey, I need to play and show you what this is, asking them to move away from the piano bench while you sit and demonstrate at that instrument is probably a good thing rather than just leaning over them. Um, just as, you're, as much as you're concerned about what they're bringing into the studio, their families are probably concerned about, you know, hey, you know, could my child pick up anything while they're there at the lesson? So, uh, just a mutual respect and a mutual distancing is a good and healthy thing there. Mentioned pencils earlier. Um, plan and think through and have a plan for how you will write in their or how you will help students know what to work on when they leave. What about writing in their music books? Um, you know, if you have your own writing device, you can probably do that in a safe way to write on the music. But even better, if the child is old enough or proficient enough that can write in what you're telling them to do. Having them to do that is great. Having them to arrive with their own utensils so you're not sharing. Um, if you're, the, you're working with maybe young students who are not as um, capable of doing that, 
have a plan that, hey, at the end of the lesson, I'll write down all of my notes um, and maybe spend some time on Zoom with the parent, helping them understand, hey, this is what I wrote on my notes and will you transfer the, the music or um, I can write in your students' uh, books at the end of the lessons, but that way you're not having to stop the lesson in between. So it's important to think through all of those, um, those steps as well. How are we doing? Let's check Q&A, anything? No, we're good. We'll keep rolling along. We're coming uh, in for a landing here. I think I've had more questions uh, on this topic that's coming up here than anything else here at the store. How do I clean my piano? Now, and this article is written by a registered piano technician um, and follows CDC guidelines and uh, I think it's fabulous. So I'm just gonna share it here with us. Um, the Piano Technicians Guild has great information um, that is, by the way, the, the PTG, the Piano Technicians Guild, is the professional association of, um, of registered piano technicians that have, you know, kind of beyond somebody that can just tune a piano, somebody that has a lot of training and um, takes professional development in their field very seriously. And so they're having a lot of conversations among their members about how to be in customers' homes and service customers' pianos safely and keep their customers and themselves um, healthy and safe. And also they're, they're kind of a go-to resource for people that, that ask. So they put this information uh, together here um, and they again have referenced the, the CDC website. Um, and they do mention a few things I think that are important to note out here. Um, special care is needed when using disinfectant products on a piano. Um, depending on the finish of your piano, um, certain Commercial cleaners can absolutely destroy, damage, uh, and cloud those finishes. So we need to be very careful. Um, Greg Chang, I think here is the author of this article. He's an RPT, a registered piano technician. Um, first of all, again, we've already mentioned this, using alcohol-based disinfectants, do not use any bleach-based product on a piano. That can damage the finish. Don't use any citrus uh, finish, uh, clean based products. I know there's some orange glow cleaners and things like that. Um, those are um, detrimental to the, the look of the piano. Um, and so they're recommending using alcohol-based products. And uh, this may seem obvious, but if you're using a spray or a liquid bottle, do not spray the instrument itself. Um, they recommend, that this is a clickable, li clickable link, um, but they recommend a disposable paper towel that feels like cloth um, that won't leave lint behind. That is one, uh, that is, uh, you know, use once and discard. Um, the Wipol uh, brand is a pretty nice quality. You can get a big roll of that for a pretty affordable price. Uh, throw it away between, um, you know, after you're done cleaning it. Don't use reusable towels, uh, which could spread germs from one, uh, you know, one customer to the next. Um, again, the most touched surface of the piano um, is going to be the keys. I think we all know that. That may be the, that key and the, surf, the uh, key slip in front of the piano may be the only part of the piano your student touches. Um, you can use disinfecting wipes on the, piano, on the keys. Make sure that you know, there's not too much liquid uh, hanging out there in the cloth. We, don't, we want to use enough to sanitize the keys, but not enough to allow drips of liquid down between the keys, which could cause swelling and warpage. You know, it, on an extreme level. There are some products out there um, by a company called Corey. They make a piano polish, but they also make a, a piano cleaner called Keybright. It's actually available here at Amro. Um, but they use that to help clean especially dirty finishes. Your keys aren't going to get that dirty from lesson to lesson, um, but they, the piano cleaner that they use is very good. Test the surface uh, in a discrete area of your piano before you use it on the main finish of the piano. So make sure that the finish doesn't come off or cloud or discolor, um, especially for wood tone pianos. I will say wood tone and uh, satin, so the matte finished pianos are especially um, uh, vulnerable to the wrong products. The high polished pianos um, are not absolutely you know, safe and in the clear for anything, but they tend to be a little bit more resilient to commercial cleaning products. Um, Windex is a good one to get stuff cleaned off, but uh, you know, using hydrogen peroxide or rubbing alcohol is a, 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 an okay um, uh, cleaning 
product to use on here. Um, as I said, polyurethane, that's the te generally the satin wood pianos or lacquer finishes. Test them in a discrete area. Spray the towel, don't spray the piano. Follow up with a dry towel when you're done. Uh, cleaning a piano uh, that's in satin, make sure you're going with the grain, not going across. That can cause scratches and hazing. Um, with older pianos that are what we call alligator, if the finishes are checking, um, where the finish is peeling, it's difficult to predict what's going to happen with that. So test an area that's out of sight before you, you know, start right there on the, the logo on the fall board. Um, cleaning a piano is not a scrubbing process. If you push down hard or back and forth very fast and hard, um, that could scratch or damage the finish. It's very soft. It's you know, all you're doing because you know you're just you're just pulling off oils from fingertips and any aerosols that have um, you know maintained onto the piano. Um, you know, just very very soft. Um, you know, soap and water for most piano finishes is also an acceptable cleaner um, because we're just trying to pull whatever got brought in during the lesson. We're trying to pull it off the piano. We're not trying to uh, you know scrub for surgery here. Um, so less is more in this area and that it can be a um, you know an effective way to clean the piano between students or at the end of the day. All right coming in for a landing. Um, this is a new product that's out that I did want to just mention. We'll have one here in the next week or so at the store. Um, not meant to be a sales pitch, just a, a really intriguing product by a company called QRS. It was just announced just about two weeks ago. And this is intriguing because it's an ultraviolet uh, keyboard sanitizer. So looking at the picture here, it covers about half the keyboard at once. And this is really nice because this is going to penetrate to the area between the keys where uh, a virus and airborne bacteria, mold spores, things like that, uh, could get that your Lysol wipe won't reach. Um, this is a product that at the end of the day might be a good idea to simply turn on. Um, in it has settings from five to 60 minutes um, and you can simply turn it on. It's got an automatic timer, let it do its thing, move it to the other half of the keyboard, hit the button again. And uh, you know, for a professional studio uh, piano that has a lot of people playing in it, I think this is something that might be uh, you know, compelling. Uh, ultraviolet light is actually being used in hospitals in, uh, on COVID floors right now. You know, they can empty the room out. Uh, ultraviolet light is dangerous to human skin. So, you know, it's, it's not anything you would want to turn on and try to look in. Um, and the, the nice thing about this product is they've already thought uh, if it's removed from the keyboard, there's a safety switch and it turns off automatically and no light can get out when it's turned on on the keyboard. Um, that's something that's available. You can buy it online direct from QRS. Uh, we do have an educator price if you're interested. You know, of course, let us know. Let's take a look at some final considerations. Um, and I already said this uh, once. Um, think through your backup plan. You know, nobody likes to think through worst case scenarios. But if you have a family that does call you and say, hey, we're not going to make it in, you know, dad's not feeling well or you know whatever that is let's make sure that we already know hey that's okay we can switch why don't we do all our on we don't why don't we go ahead and do our online lesson you know i we really believe that a lot of the 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 protocols and policies and things that we've discussed if you put them in place they will help prevent most spread of the virus in your studio um but you know maybe think about uh considering an upgrading your audio equipment so that if you do get stuck back in online lessons with a student who really should be face to face, especially those advanced students, make sure that they can have the best sound possible. And you know, for some of those more advanced students, you may even recommend, hey, we can do online lessons, um, but um, you know, I'm going to recommend that rather than just the cell phone mic or the iPad mic or the laptop, you know, camera, that we look for some other options. There are some really good products on the market available. Um, you know, lots of retailers. Amro has some, Amazon, um, BH Photo and Video. Um, if somebody's using an iPhone, there's a company called Rode that makes a little um, a microphone here. It's about $60 and uh, it is fabulous as far as the quality and it points right at the piano. And that can help with some of those clarity problems and complex passages. So do some research, think about 
uh, you know, hey, if we need to get into online lessons, how can I make sure my students don't suffer? In fact, we'll be having an upcoming session that's going to talk about elevating that experience. Uh, this is one that I've had a couple teachers ask, and, and I put it out here um, with no endorsement or, or uh, denial either. But if you have an attorney that, you know, or a CPA or, or somebody that helps advise your studio, it may be worth consulting with them to say, hey, do we need a liability waiver? Again, nobody wants to think through worst case scenarios, but, you know, if, if for some reason there were some, uh, you know, um, breakout of the virus with a student who's been in your studio, do you have a plan in place? You know, when you get the call that says, hey, you know, we were at lessons yesterday and today, you know, hey, we weren't feeling well and we went and got a test, you know, what's your plan for notifying your studio and what should you say to help obviously protect, uh, you know, the identity and the privacy of, you know, the folks that maybe, um, you know, aren't feeling well, but also to keep the rest of your studio safe. Um, that's something that we probably aren't the right folks to advise, but I encourage you to, you know, find the right uh, legal professional and to simply say, hey, this is what I'm thinking I need to do. Here are the benefits of why I need to open my doors, um, but I want to do it in a safe way. Have them review all of this information and uh, you know, then say, hey, you know, should I have anything signed from my families before they, they do online lessons? Um, so that's it. That's what we have to share. This is going to be, let me stop sharing my screen here for a moment. This is gonna be an editable document. We're hoping for feedback and input from many of you um, on, hey, what do you think works, what's not? Um, we would value that input. Um, are there any questions? Let me look at the chat here and just see if anything came up during it. Oh, let's see what's up there. All right. Hey, thanks, Pam. Appreciate you being here. Um, this session is being recorded. We'll have it in the next 24 to 48 hours posted online. It'll be archived on our website. Um, so feel free to review and uh, we'll have a downloadable link to the document there. We'll email it out to all of the attendees today. Um, and then um, if you have ideas or, you know, ways to contribute, please do let us know. We'd encourage you um, to reach out and, uh, um, you know, to reach out and, you know, let us know. Uh, quick note, we've had a, a, a couple uh, things coming up with the schedule and uh, we did send out actually a survey for um, hey, dates and times that might be um, best for some of these sessions, realizing there's not going to be a, a single time that works best for everybody. Um, it seems like we got some feedback that Fridays may be better for some and Tuesdays may be better for some. There was no overwhelming answer. So appreciate those of you that have been able to make the time today or those of you that are coming back and watching the recording. Um, upcoming sessions. Next week should be a really great one. Next Thursday, the 17th of September, at 10 a.m. we'll have George Laturst, a company called Time Warp Tech. We'll be covering his products, Internet MIDI, uh, Classroom Maestro, and a few others that are great for online lessons and uh, um, overcoming some of the challenges uh, of being remote from your students. We're going to take a week off, actually, September 24th. We won't have a session. Sept uh, October 1st, we're going to have a few um, industry folks um, to come and bring some information about some audio equipment that can help when we are doing online lessons so that students can hear you better and you can hear your students um, you know, a little bit more clearly. And then we'll take a week off and October 15th, we're going to have um, a session from Landon Baumgartner with uh, the Faber Piano Adventures talking about some of the online resources uh, that they have for students to help their learning um, supplement during the lessons and even at home with home practice. So again, thank you very much. This has been Key Concepts, um, Considerations for Piano Teacher, or Conversations for Piano Teachers. And we've been taking a look at um, considerations for opening your, reopening your studio for face-to-face -face lessons. So thank you for your time. Good luck to everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye.